Welcome to Darwin Centre Live. Welcome to our web audience as well. I'm Emma and I'm your host for this session. Um, now today Chris Stringer has joined us, who is from our paleontology department. Um, I don't know whether people will have seen in newspapers this morning there's been a story um, about some ancient, in fact the oldest known fossils of modern humans have been found in Ethiopia. Um, Chris has commented on this in uh, the scientific uh, magazine Nature, so that's what he's here to talk about today. So, uh, Chris, tell us exactly what exactly was the discovery in Ethiopia, what was found? Well, the uh, team of American and Ethiopian uh, researchers, and they found remains of three individuals. There's a child skull and two adult skulls, and the most complete adult skull is uh, the one that's featured in the newspapers. And they're important really for two reasons. One is they're relatively complete, and up to now, this is an example, this is a fossil that I've worked on, a reconstruction of a fossil skull from Ethiopia that we think is 130,000 years old, but you can see these are the real bones and here are the gaps where we had to put plasticine in to the reconstruction. Critics were able to say, well that's, you know, may look modern to you, but it's not very convincing, and they were also able to say it wasn't well dated. Now the Ethiopian material, the new finds, are complete enough to say that they are primitive modern humans, and also they're very well dated. They're related to two volcanic layers above and below, uh, which have been dated by argon isotope uh, measurements to about 160,000 years old. And the oldest, oldest known fossils until this time had been about 115,000 years old, is that right? Well, the oldest really complete modern human fossils that, you, you know, that most people agreed were early modern humans were about 115,000 years old, and that are actually from Israel. Uh, this material, to me, was reasonable evidence that modern humans were in Ethiopia 130,000 years ago. And there are possibly older remains of modern humans from Kenya, from further south in Africa. But with all of those, there were doubts about either the completeness of the material or the dating. So yes, the, uh, the convincing evidence did come from later. Let's just take a look at the map so we can just put it into context to show exactly where it's uh, shown. Oh, here we are. It's on the map behind me. Yes, so uh, looking at Africa as a whole, this material has come from northeast Africa, from Ethiopia. Um, so we're at the northern end of this great rift valley that has produced so many important remains of, uh, of early humans and pre-humans. And the area of Ethiopia, so we're up near, you can see where Gadimota and Diridawa are up in Ethiopia there. These new finds have come from a site called Herto, which is up in that part of Ethiopia. And this region is, is especially important because you have vast layers of sediment covering millions of years. And so within those sediments, uh, excavations can actually reveal many different parts of our evolutionary story. So this exact same region has produced fossils which are two and a half million years old and not too far away material that goes back to five million years, the very beginning of human evolution. But this material is important because it does fill a gap in our evolutionary story uh, because you know, a number of us, such as me, we, we, we believe for a long time that modern humans did originate in Africa, but the evidence certainly wasn't as convincing as you'd like it to be. And so this is important material. It's complete enough to say that these are probably our species, even if it's a primitive version, there's enough there to say they are maybe the oldest modern humans we, we so far have. Right, well, we'll go on to have a look at that in, in just a moment. But first of all, let's have a look at the skulls themselves. We've got some photos of them um, on our computer here. The skulls themselves, I gather, are still in Ethiopia. Is that yes, right? Yes, the original material has, has stayed in Ethiopia, and the team of researchers have, uh, have worked on it in Ethiopia. Now, there's a child skull, um, which is not as complete as this one, and that child um, still has modern features on it. Um, and that skull was found in something like 200 pieces, so it had to be reconstructed in a very complex jigsaw. This is the most complete specimen, this one here. It's thought to be an adult male individual. Um, we've got most of the skull, as you can see there in the face. We haven't got the lower jaw. We haven't got the rest of the skeleton of any of these individuals. And there's a third skull, which is only parts of the skull, which is even bigger and more robust than this one. So we can say already from these three skulls that these were really big individuals. The length of this skull pictured here is bigger than a sample of 3,000 modern human skulls from all over the world. So these were very big individuals. Uh, you know, they, they could have probably walked into any rugby team in the world today, <laughs> given the probable physique they had. So how, how do they compare with the skulls of ancient humans, so ancient Homo sapiens that we already have mm. fossils of? Yes, I mean, just going back to the specimens I've got here, this is what might be the ancestral form 
for modern humans and for Neanderthals. Uh, we call this Homo heidelbergensis. There are different views about classification, but this represents a species that was present in Africa and Europe, say, four or five hundred thousand years ago. And we think that this species in Europe went on to give rise to the Neanderthals. In Africa, we think it went on to give rise to us. And then here we've got a skull from Israel that's about a hundred thousand years old. And the problem was, between these two, we only had this material that was either rather fragmentary or not well dated to fill this gap between these more primitive forms in Africa and the first, you know, what we could say, definite modern humans. And this material from Ethiopia at 160,000 really does fit very nicely, both in terms of dating and in terms of the morphology, because if we look at the size and shape of the skull, um, we can see there a comparison on the top right is the original of this fossil here, so-called Rhodesian man. The bottom right, we've got a modern human skull. And what's interesting about the new finds from Ethiopia is that they do show a mixture at the front of the skull and in the face and in the rounded brain case. They do look like the modern human skull down at the bottom there. But at the back of the skull, they still have a strongly angulated back, which looks like these supposed ancestors in Africa. So there's a nice link there to the people um, before them in Africa. And even in more detail, it's a lot of information on here, but here I've done a compilation of the features of those skulls from Ethiopia, the adult ones. You can see that the first five characters are actually ancestral features. They're features in the skull, particularly in the back of the skull, that are primitive features that come from the earlier ancestral forms. And then characters 6 to 11 are features that are quite widespread in early members of our species, from Israel and from Africa. And then at the bottom, we've got features of modern humans, people in the world today. And you can see that these Herto individuals show a nice mixture of characteristics of the ancestral form, early Homo sapiens from Africa and Israel, and they've even got some features which are very modern features, features like people alive today. So they seem to have been, they seem to be filling a gap then between the more ancient uh, Homo sapiens and um, us. Did yes. you know before these fossils were found that there was actually a gap there? Well, personally, I found the evidence pretty convincing because there's material from Morocco, from Tanzania, uh, from Kenya, from Ethiopia itself, from South Africa, which to me filled that gap. But, you know, I was, you know, even I had to admit, I mean, I'm a great supporter of the out of Africa theory, but one had to say that the evidence was questionable. You know, I was able to put it together to make what satisfied me as an evolutionary story but it certainly didn't satisfy a lot of the critics. So people who you know, weren't sure about Africa said, well, you know, we need better evidence, we need more complete evidence, we need better dated evidence. And for me, these finds really do fulfil those, uh, those qualifications. So where then do these humans lie in the scheme of things? How do they relate to us? Mm. Are they Homo sapiens? Yeah, I mean, I think there's enough there to say that they're members of the same species as us, Homo sapiens. The authors of the papers in Nature actually have named them as a new subspecies, Homo sapiens idaltu, and that's an Afar, an Ethiopian language word for elder. So they've given it a different subspecies name. I don't think that the material really, uh, you know, the subspecies name to me is not a very useful one. I think that these are primitive Homo sapiens. Um, certainly different from anyone alive today, more robust, more strongly built. But nevertheless, enough features there of modern humans to, say, to show that these do belong to our species, even if they're very early and primitive members. Mm. Now, a lot of the work on um, our, our predecessors um, has been very much DNA-based. Mm. Um, has any of the work on these skulls also been DNA-based? What have they been able to, to show us in addition to that DNA work? Mm. Yes, I mean, you're right. There's, there's been the fossil evidence in favour of our African origins, but a lot of the evidence has come from study of recent people, living people, and their DNA, because we've got a, a sort of record of our evolution in our genes. And so that DNA can be used to reconstruct past evolutionary patterns for humans. And that, most of that evidence did suggest we originated in Africa quite recently.